Good morning and welcome to St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church. I am Pastor Monique Summers and we greet you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are grateful to God that you have decided to join us this morning for our worship service. Now we will have prayer and scripture and following the scripture reading, we will have the proclamation of the word of God. And if it is your desire to contribute to this ministry on today, you can do so by way of Cash App to St. Luke Opelika, that's S-T-L-U-K-E-O-P-E-L-I-K-A. -E or you may also do so by GiveLify to St. Luke AME Church, Opelika, Alabama. And of course you can send it by way of mail to P.O. Box 4138, Opelika, Alabama, 36803. Again, we are grateful that you have decided to worship with us this morning. At this time, we will have our doxology, and following that, we will enter into worship. Amen. Let us now prepare our hearts and our minds for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we bow before you this morning and come before you this morning as humble as we know how. Oh God, just to laud and magnify your holy and your righteous name. God, we come before you just to adore you just to look upon you and reflect upon all that you have done and is doing and will do in our lives. And so God, we come before you realizing that you are right, always righteous, and that when we are not in agreement with you, we are wrong. So therefore this morning, dear Heavenly Father, we come confessing our sins, seeking forgiveness of our wrongdoings and our shortcomings. Oh God, we bow before you this morning just to ask that as you forgive us of our shortcomings and our wrongdoings by thought, word, and deed, 
the heavenly father that you would touch our hearts and touch our minds and cause us to have that same forgiving spirit that we will forgive others who trespass even against us. Now, oh God, we come not for any show, form, nor fashion, but God, we come with the spirit of thanksgiving in our heart. God, thankful that you have looked beyond our faults and saw that we are your children and still stand in need. And so, oh God, this morning we come with a heart of thanksgiving. Thanking you for life being as good as it is. Oh God, thanking you this morning, dear Heavenly Father, for food and for clothing and shelter. Thanking you, dear Heavenly Father, for our health and a reasonable portion of our strength. Thank you, Lord, for a mind that is still stayed on you. Then, oh God, we come praying. Praying for those who are less fortunate than us. Realizing there are some who have no food, no home, nor shelter. Some who have health that seems like it is fading away. And so this morning, God, we lift them all up to you. Those who are in hospitals and those who are in prison to Heavenly Father. We ask, oh God, that you touch those who need to be touched this morning. Heal those who need to be healed this morning, oh God. And oh God, we pray for this listening audience on today whether by conference call or social media. Oh God, you let your word go forth in power and in might that something might be said this morning that will edify and build up your people, that when they should leave from this service, they would say it was good for us to be in the presence of the Lord. Now, oh God, we come praying, the Heavenly Father, that if there is some lost soul on today, oh God, that upon hearing your word proclaimed, that they will come running saying, I yield, I yield, I cannot hold out any longer, that they will turn their life over to you. This is your servant's prayer, I pray in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our risen Savior. And every believer, I'll say amen, amen, and amen. At this time, we will have our scripture reading this morning coming from Acts, the second chapter, we'll be looking at verses 42 through 47. Acts chapter two, reading verses 42 through 47. And our key verse will be verse number 45. I will be reading the new King James version of the text, Acts 2, 42 through 47. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them saying, be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized and that day about 3000 were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. And I just want to read verse 44 and 45 again. Now, all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. Today, just for a few moments, I want to minister from a topic entitled Divine Assistance. Divine Assistance. I just want to remind the church this morning, as we just celebrated Pentecost on last Sunday, and this Sunday coming from the book of Acts in the second chapter, 
we see that there is vital church growth. And when we look at this particular scripture, we see that there are benefits for participating in the local church. Uh, if we back up and just look at the scriptures, verses 42 through 47, we find that there were uh, some instructions that were given. Uh, the Bible says that they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. Um, there was fellowship, uh, uh, the sharing together. Uh, there was observance of the ordinance, the breaking of bread. Uh, there was prayer, and I want to say to us prayers with an S, corporate prayers, working together. Um, there was effective outreach because fear came upon every soul and it gave them energy to get something done. Uh, there was a common cause. They had all things in common. Um, they share this sense of togetherness. But I also want to submit to us what we find in verse number 45 is there was mutual assistance. Uh, but the Bible says in verse 45 that they sold their possessions and, and sold their goods and divided their possessions and, and goods, the, the, reef, uh, the proceeds from that. They divided it among all so that no one was standing in need. There was some type of assistance. And so the Bible says, as we read on down, that the Lord, he added to the church daily those who were being saved. And so this morning, I thought just for a moment, we would look at verse 45 again, and, and, and look at how the Bible says that they sold their goods and divided them so that no one had need. They had some assistance. This morning, although I want to look at not just mutual assistance that we can see from the text, uh, it identifies that they sold their goods, they sold their possessions, and therefore no one suffered lack. But can I tell you this morning, that there is no mutual assistance except there be divine assistance. Uh, and so whenever divine assistance come into existence and tap into mutual assistance, uh, we can see a great work from the Lord. I want to submit to you that I believe one of the reasons why the church grew and, and God blessed and added to the church. It wasn't just because of the apostles instructions. Or it wasn't just because of the fellowship or the observance of the breaking of bread or the corporate prayers that went up or the effective outreach because they had fear that had come upon every soul. They had something in common. And I want to suggest this morning that when God's people come together and divide what they have so that no one suffers lack, God is right there in the midst. Uh, I discovered in Isaiah chapter 58, round about verse number seven, uh, the scripture said, is it not to share your bread with the hungry? So when the church can go outside of itself and begin to look at the needs of all people, it, it, the scripture says, is it not to, that we should share our bread with the hungry? And is it not that you should bring your house, uh, bring to your house the poor and those who are cast out? So the scripture says, hey. It is our duty to share the bread, our food, our resources with those who are in need. It is our duty to bring into our house the poor and those who are cast out. Uh, when we see those who are naked, am I my brother's keeper that we should cover them and hide not ourselves from our own flesh? Then the Bible says in verse number eight, uh, then your light shall shine forth like the morning. Then your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. And then you'll call 
and the Lord will answer. You will cry and he will say, here I am. I stopped by to remind the church this morning that we have divine assistance. Uh, when uh, the local church, uh, when uh, the universal church uh, can make up its mind uh, that we're going to come together, that we're going to see to it, that we do all that we can to see that no one that suffers lack. Uh, the Bible says uh, that when uh, we help those who are less fortunate uh, and when uh, we don't withhold what we have, uh, when we do these things, uh, the Bible says uh, that the church uh, can call and the Lord will answer. Uh, isn't it good news to know uh, that we can call him uh, early in the morning? Uh, we can call him uh, in the midday uh, afternoon. Uh, we can call him uh, late uh, in the evening. Uh, it's good news to know that we can call on the Lord uh, all uh, day long. Uh, and the Bible says uh, that when you call on the Lord, uh, he will answer and he will say to rest, uh, here uh, I am. Uh, now, I don't know where you're at this morning uh, and what you need from the Lord, uh, but he says, I am uh, the great uh, I am. Uh, whatever you need him to be right now, uh, if you need food, uh, he'll provide it. Uh, if you need water, uh, he'll quench your thirst. Uh, if you're in a financial deficit, uh, he know how to eliminate that. Uh, whatever you need. Uh, if you're sick, uh, he's a healer. Uh, if you are in distress, uh, he can wipe away uh, tears from our eyes. Uh, if you're brokenhearted, uh, he came to heal the brokenhearted. So he says, when uh, we take care of those in need, uh, the church opens the door for divine uh, assistance. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. Uh, maybe you've been relying uh, on mutual assistance. Uh, you've been relying on uh, your mother and your father. Uh, Perhaps your brothers uh, and your sisters, uh, maybe your spouse uh, or your friends uh, or some other family member. Uh, but I stopped by to remind the church this morning uh, that we have uh, divine assistance. Uh, and I believe God hears the cry of the church uh, when the church takes care of the church. Good God Almighty. Uh, well, somebody's wondering. Uh, What's the difference uh, between divine assistance uh, and mutual assistance? Uh, I stopped by to let us know uh, that when we have uh, divine assistance, uh, we will see it uh, every time uh, we go to battle. Uh, and somebody may be saying, well, I'm not in a battle. Uh, if you're listening right now and you're giving your life to Christ, uh, you're on the battlefield uh, for the Lord. Uh, that's what Paul writes about putting on the full armor. Uh, and God will uh, come in and offer the believer uh, divine assistance. Uh, even in our battles. Uh, come here, Jehoshaphat. Uh, when we look at 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 20, uh, verses 5 through 17, uh, the Bible say it happened uh, after this that the people of Moab uh, with the people of Ammon, uh, with the people of the Ammonites uh, came up to battle against Jehoshaphat. Uh, then some people came uh, and told Jehoshaphat, uh, there's a great multitude uh, coming against you from beyond the sea. Uh, but I like what Jehoshaphat did. Uh, the Bible says uh, that Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast to all, all Judea. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and 
Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court uh, because his enemies uh, were coming against him. Uh, not one, uh, not two, uh, but three. Uh, we see the Ammonites, uh, the Moabites uh, coming against uh, Jehoshaphat. Uh, we see him uh, getting ready for battle, uh, but he doesn't pick up weapons. Uh, the Bible says uh, he stood before the assembly uh, and Jehoshaphat uh, began to remind the Lord uh, that you said uh, in your word uh, that if we cried out to you uh, from this place uh, in this house uh, that you would hear us uh, and uh, he continued to talk to the Lord uh, and all the people uh, were standing with him uh, the Bible says uh, that the spirit of the Lord uh, came upon Jehaziel uh, the son of Zechariah uh, and in the midst of uh, of the assembly, he said to the people, listen, uh, all you inhabitants of Jerusalem uh, and you, O King Jehoshaphat, uh, thus says the Lord, uh, don't be afraid, uh, good God Almighty, uh, and don't be dismayed uh, because of this great uh, multitude, uh, for the battle uh, is not yours, uh, but it belongs uh, to the Lord, I tell you, when divine assistance shows up, uh, you don't need to fight in this battle. Uh, just position yourselves, uh, stand still, uh, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, uh, O Judah and Jerusalem. Uh, don't fear or be dismayed, but tomorrow, get ready and go out. Go out against your enemy. Go out for battle against them. But the Lord is with you. If you continue reading, you'll find that the enemy turned on themselves. Because uh, when we get divine assistance, uh, we don't have to worry about winning the battle. The battle is already won. We can just stand still. And what's the Lord? He fights for us. How many know today he's a battle axe, an instrument of war in a time of battle? And God knows how to win every battle that the enemy tried to put before us. Stop by to remind the church this morning that we have divine assistance in the time of battle. But somebody else said, well, preacher, I don't have a battle that I'm fighting, but I seem to be troubled on every side. Uh, the good news is uh, that there's divine assistance uh, for those uh, who are in trouble. Uh, according to Psalms uh, 50 and verse 15, uh, it says, call upon me in the day of your trouble, and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. So whoever offer praises uh, glorifies me. And to him uh, who orders his conduct aright, uh, I will show the salvation of God. Uh, don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but if you are troubled uh, on every hand, uh, I stop by to tell you uh, that if you call upon the Lord, uh, the Bible said in the day of your trouble, uh, I will stop by uh, and deliver you uh, and you shall uh, glorify me. Uh, sometimes trouble uh, just knock on our door uh, just so we can call on the Lord uh, and he will get the glory. Uh, good God Almighty. Uh, so sometimes uh, God will give us uh, divine assistance uh, when the enemy comes against us. Uh, and then other times uh, God will offer divine assistance uh, when we find ourselves uh, troubled uh, on every side. Uh, he says to the wicked, uh, 
What right have you uh, to declare my statues uh, or take my covenant in your mouth? Uh, seeing you hate instructions, uh, you cast my words away. Now consider this, uh, you who forget God, uh, lest I tear you in pieces uh, and there be none to deliver you. Uh, but you who offer praise, uh, you who are in trouble, uh, if you praise me, uh, if you glorify me, uh, you can turn to me uh, and I will uh, deliver you. Uh, stop by to remind the church uh, that we serve a God uh, that will uh, offer divine assistance uh, in the time of battle. Uh, he will uh, offer divine assistance uh, in the time of uh, the time of trouble. Uh, stop by to let you know uh, that God will uh, offer uh, divine assistance uh, whenever uh, you seem perplexed uh, and you find yourself in a crisis, uh, a disaster, uh, look like emergencies uh, and calamities, uh, perhaps predicaments uh, and a crossroad uh, that you're standing at uh, and you're at a breaking point. Uh, but the Bible says, uh, according to Luke uh, 21, uh, 14 and 15, uh, that we don't have to worry uh, when we're brought before kings and rulers. Uh, when you stand before people in higher positions, uh, you don't have to worry. Uh, Jesus said, for my name's sake, uh, for it will turn out for you uh, an occasion uh, to give testimony. Uh, God will uh, step in uh, in the time of crisis, uh, in the time of trouble, uh, in the time of battle. Uh, but according to Luke, uh, the Bible says uh, to the believer, uh, therefore settle it uh, in your hearts, uh, not to meditate beforehand uh, what you will answer, uh, but I will give you a mouth uh, and I will give you wisdom uh, which all your adversaries uh, will not be able to contradict. Uh, you will uh, be betrayed, uh, but I'll give you what to say. Uh, even your parents, uh, they may betray you. Uh, your siblings, uh, they may betray you. Uh, your relatives and friends, uh, they will betray you. Uh, but the Bible says uh, they'll be put to death uh, and you will be hated uh, for my name's sake. Uh, but look at this uh, divine assistance. Uh, he says, but not a hair uh, on our head uh, shall be lost. Uh, but you just uh, possess patience uh, and your soul uh, shall be all right. Uh, who am I talking to today? Uh, you're in the middle uh, of a crisis. Uh, you're trying to plot uh, and plan your way out. Uh, but I stopped by to remind the church uh, that God will uh, offer divine assistance. Uh, he'll give you the words. Uh, he'll give you the wisdom uh, of what you need to say uh, and how you need to answer. Uh, and not a hair, uh, not a strand of hair uh, on your head shall be lost because you offered and he offered and we accepted the divine assistance when divine assistance shows up we win the battle when divine assistance shows up uh, trouble just seem uh, not to last uh, always uh, when uh, divine assistance uh, shows up. Uh, we don't have to worry uh, about what we shall say, uh, for God will uh, give us the very words uh, that we need to say, uh, and no one will be able uh, to contradict our resistance. Uh, when uh, divine assistance shows up, uh, he will uh, come in uh, and interrupt our prayer life. Uh, Prayer uh, is just a request to God, uh, but according to Romans uh, 8, uh, 16 through 27, uh, we, in, uh, we find ourselves weak uh, and uh, we need some help. Uh, I thank God uh, 
for divine assistance. Uh, when I can't quote uh, the 23rd number of Psalms uh, that David wrote, uh, when I can't murmur uh, that the Lord is my shepherd, uh, when I can't pray uh, the model prayer, uh, good God Almighty, uh, our Father, uh, which art in heaven, uh, when uh, we get weak, uh, good God Almighty, uh, God has uh, divine assistance uh, called the Holy Ghost. Uh, come here, uh, uh, Romans uh, chapter 8, uh, verse number 26, and uh, likewise, uh, the Spirit uh, also helps us in our weakness, uh, for we do not know uh, what we should pray, uh, for as we ought to pray, uh, but the Spirit himself uh, makes intercession for us. Uh, the Spirit begins to groan uh, and make utterance. Uh, now he who searches the heart uh, knows the mind of the Spirit uh, because he makes intercessions for the saints uh, according to the will of God. Uh, good God Almighty, uh, somebody right now uh, trying to get a prayer through. Uh, I stop by to tell you uh, we got uh, divine assistance, uh, the Spirit uh, begins to make intercessions uh, for the saints uh, according to the will of God. Uh, and whatever you're praying about, uh, stop by to remind you uh, that all these things uh, are working together uh, for the good of those uh, who love the Lord, uh, who are called uh, according to his purpose. Uh, who am I talking to today? Uh, you were just about to give up. Uh, but I want to remind you uh, that we got some help uh, in the Holy Ghost uh, and he will uh, begin to pray for us uh, and make intercessions uh, and make it known uh, unto the Lord. Uh, remember Isaiah said uh, that when you call me, uh, I will answer uh, anybody here uh, calling on the Lord. Uh, good God Almighty, uh, stop by uh, to remind the church uh, that God will uh, offer us assistance, uh, divine assistance in prayer. Uh, he give us divine assistance in time of crisis, uh, in time of trouble, uh, in time of battle. Uh, we can call on the Lord and he will uh, give us divine, uh, divine assistance. Uh, as I get ready uh, to close it out, uh, I stop by uh, to remind the church uh, that God will uh, give us uh, a divine testimony uh, when everybody uh, seems to have forsaken us. Uh, God will uh, stand with us. Uh, I heard Paul say uh, in 2 Timothy uh, 4 and 17, uh, but the Lord uh, stood with me, uh, and the Lord, uh, he strengthened me uh, so that the message uh, may be preached through me, uh, and that all the Gentiles uh, might hear, uh, and I was delivered uh, out of the mouth of the lion, uh, and the Lord will deliver me uh, from every work of evil, uh, and he will preserve me. Uh, for his heavenly kingdom. Uh, good God Almighty, uh, Paul uh, writes these words uh, because he had uh, been forsaken. Uh, he said, at my first defense, uh, no one stood with me, uh, but all forsook me. Uh, may it not be charged against them, uh, but the Lord, uh, he stood with me. Uh, who am I talking to today? God says uh, he's got divine assistance for those uh, who feel forsaken. Uh, you look to your left uh, and nobody was there. Uh, you look to the right, uh, you can find uh, nobody. Uh, but Paul gave this testimony. He said, but uh, the Lord stood with me and the Lord, uh, he strengthened me. That's good news for the church today. That although we may find mutual assistance amongst one another, I wanted to remind us that there is divine assistance when you have been forsaken and abandoned. God offers 
divine assistance. When uh, you came to get a prayer through, uh, God offers uh, divine assistance. Uh, when crisis show up uh, in your life, in my life, uh, let us be reminded uh, that God would give us uh, the very words that we need to say. Uh, and no one will be able to contradict us because uh, he's a God uh, that offers uh, divine assistance uh, in time of crisis uh, in times of trouble. Uh, he will uh, give us uh, deliverance uh, in time of battle. Uh, he'll become uh, a battle axe. Uh, who am I talking to today? Uh, the early church grew. One of the reasons that the Bible indicates to us that the church grew was because of mutual assistance. But I stopped by to remind the church that we got uh, some divine assistance. And no one can take it away from us. James 1, 5 through 8 says it this way. God will give us uh, assistance, divine assistance to operate in wisdom. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives it liberally to all without reproach. And uh, the Bible says, when we operate in that type of wisdom, divine wisdom, that uh, we won't be tossed back and forth like the waves of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. The Bible says, let that man who's doubting in his or her faith, let him realize that he will receive nothing from the Lord because he's double-minded and unstable in all his ways. But when divine assistance come in and we ask for wisdom, God said he'll deliver it. And so this is the word of God today for the people of God. The question is, will you receive this divine assistance, divine wisdom? He offers it. Divine help when you feel abandoned. He offers it. Divine assistance in our prayer life. God offers it. Divine help in times of crisis, in times of trouble, in time of battle. Will you receive it today? As I pause right here to extend the invitation to Jesus Christ. Perhaps you're listening right now and you're saying, Preacher, I don't know this God that you're preaching about. Well, the good news is, I come to offer Christ to you today. Divine assistance, just where you are in your life. One who don't know him, never received Jesus Christ, the son of God. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If you're listening, and that's you. He said, if you'll just believe whosoever, that's you. And you and you, whosoever will receive him. He so loved the word that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. If you'll confess right now with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Thou shalt be saved. He came, he lived, and he died. The Bible says that he rose again with all power in his hand. One day he's coming back to rapture the church and redeem the church. We are the church that he's offering this divine assistance to. That's you and you've accepted Christ today simply by saying, yes, I believe. Let someone know on the phone if you're listening on the conference call. If you're listening by way of social media, send us a message right there, right now. And we'll be glad to follow up with you in your new walk with Christ. We pray if you're listening today and you need to rededicate your life that you would do the same. Let us know. On social media, send us a message. 
on the call, let someone know on the conference call with you. And then we pray that all who are listening that have already received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you have been edified even on today. Let us pray. The Heavenly Father, God, we thank you. We thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. We thank you all today, oh God, for divine assistance in our life. We thank you that the church grew, oh God, not only because of mutual assistance amongst believers, but because of divine assistance that you show up every time and give us what we need. You give us the wisdom that we need. You help us in our time of abandonment, oh God. You help us in our time of prayer, our crisis, and our time of battle. And so for that, dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful. We thank you for those listening on today and those who will listen, that they will receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. We thank you for those who are even rededicating their lives right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Every believer said, amen, amen, and amen. We do thank you for joining us on today. We pray that you will join us again next week at 10 a.m. Central Time right here on social media, Facebook Live, or by way of the conference call. It is our prayer that something has been said in this service on today that has strengthened you in your walk with Christ, or that you have received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. We will get ready to dismiss. After the benediction, there will be a final closing song. And again, we thank God and are grateful for your presence here on today. A benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. May it keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. At this time, we'll have our closing song. Thank you again for joining St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church.
Time.